Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. Here we are, episode 11, and we are finally going to be operating the equipment. Well, sort of. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about uh, performing the test operation. If you guys have installed a Daikin VRVS and you've gone to the thermostats and you've turned them on and they're all blinking at you, screaming U3, well, this is the video for you because on VRVS products, you have to run a self-diagnostic test before you can turn on the stats and just operate the system willy-nilly. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to operate the test and we're gonna talk about a few things as it relates to the test process, things you can and can't do during the test, things you need to do before and after, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Lots of information as always, but today it's just focused on test operation. If you guys do enjoy today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, you guys. All right, let's jump right in. By now, you guys know what I'm about to say before we get into the content. I must give you a disclaimer. This is not a factory authorized class. This is not a training. This is just me sharing the information with you that I've learned over the years, taking tidbits from the installation and operation manuals, really just focused on the meat and potatoes here in this series, the important things, things to look out for, things to consider when designing, installing, and firing off your Daikin VRVS equipment. So again, just don't take my word for fact. Always read through your installation and operation manuals, our TFM as always. Um, I'm just here trying to give you guys the information. That way, when you're on the job site, you forget something. Maybe you can't find that installation manual. Your buddy threw it in the garbage. You can review this video and kind of get some information from that. So hopefully your job goes smoothly that way. All right, let's go ahead and let's jump right into test operation. So with the whiteboard up, let's go through the steps first give you guys that information, and then we'll talk about it. So from H3P solid on the outdoor unit, that's where you always want to start with your main screen. With your thermostats in the off position, which means the green light on the on off button is not on, it is not blinking, and you do not have any errors whatsoever on the system. You just got done verifying communication. Yes, the outdoor unit addressed all the indoor units. Great, we're ready to do our test run. What you're going to do is simply Press and hold the test button on the outdoor unit. For how long, Dana? Well, that's a really great question. You're gonna press and hold it until something changes. What's gonna change? Well, H3P will go out, 2P should be blinking, and 7P should be solid. Your test will then start. So now let's push pause and let's talk about a couple things to consider before you start the test. The first thing is, have you added all of your additional refrigerant charge. Now you should have done this right after you completed the evacuation process and did your standing vacuum test. Every VRVS system requires an additional refrigerant charge to be added to your field piping, your line set that you ran. It doesn't matter if you ran a 10 foot line set, the minimum required, or a 50 foot line set or a 100 foot line set. It, none of that matters. The VRVS equipment, it's not like a mini split. It does not have the refrigerant in the outdoor unit capable for any additional line set. There is refrigerant in the outdoor unit. There's just not enough for any predetermined amount of line sets. So you have to do a calculation. And we talked about this in a previous video, which I will go ahead and put a card up in the corner for so you can refer back to it. You wanna make sure you have your refrigerant, your additional refrigerant charge added before you do the test. The other thing you wanna make sure you do is walk the job site, whether it's a home or a light commercial building, and verify that all the thermostats are in the off position. If any one thermostat is turned on by the user or by another technician, you know, a lot of times they see the display on the controller and they think, oh, great, I can operate the air conditioning or sweet, I can get some heat up in this place. They turn it on. Well, guess what? Immediately that nav or that thermostat is going to go into a U3 alarm. And U3, anytime you get a U3, it basically just means, hey, yo, you didn't do the test. 
Maybe you, this is your first system and you're used to mini splits and you didn't know there was a test. Mini splits don't have self-diagnostic capabilities. They're mini splits. They're entry level inverters, minimal controls. We've talked about this many times on this channel. VRV is a little bit different. It's a little more robust. It has more controls. It does more stuff. You got to run a self-diagnostic. So you walk around and make sure to turn off all the stats. You turn off all the stats with the on off button. If you have nav controller, Bam, looks like this right here, on off button. You wanna make sure that the light is not on and the light is not blinking. The other thing that happens more on commercial than it does residential is your air balancers. Your air balancers will go around and they'll turn on all the navs and they'll put them in fan mode to do all the air balancing. Well, they don't always turn off the navs. So you wanna make sure to turn off all the navs before you start the test. I have seen in some cases where any indoor units that have something wired to T1, T2, could cause a problem for the test. So just make sure if you have anything wired to T1, T2, that you quickly go to the controller, adjust the field settings accordingly, which we've talked about in a different video for the nav controller series. I'll put a card for that in the corner now for you guys. Make sure you set up your T1, T2 field settings before you do the test. The last thing to maybe talk about is if you have an FXSQ or an FXMQ unit, uh, PVJU or PBVJU, or uh, FXSQ TAVJU, you need to set the uh, static pressure settings in the field settings before you do the test. Otherwise, if you run the test, during the test, it's going to set up its target condensing and evaporating ranges. And if you go after the fact to change all the static pressures of your ducted units, then you need to redo the test. If that's the case, no worries, just redo the test. You can redo the test as often or as much as you want, although it's really not necessary other than doing the condensing and evaporating target adjustment. So that's pretty much the things that you need to verify. Obviously, make sure that you've opened up your outdoor unit stop valves, king valves, service ports, whatever you want to call them, when the system starts the test. So let's talk about what happens during the test. The test can take up to one hour. Now, usually we're talking about VRVS here. You don't have very many indoor units. It's a smaller project. It's either on a home, most of the time it's on a home, or maybe a light commercial application, very small three, four, five ton application. So you shouldn't expect it to take the full hour. Usually it takes 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. I've seen them take 45 minutes. I don't think I've ever actually seen one take the full hour, but it can take up to an hour. Just be aware of that. Also, when you start the test, all of your thermostats will turn on and they will be tested in the cooling mode. So the system will never test in the heat mode. You can't change this, at least not today as, as of recording this video in 2021, you can't change that. Maybe in the future we'll be able to, but right now we can't. Tests in cooling and the thermostats are locked out. So you can't do field settings or group addressing or air net addressing. We've talked about it all that stuff in other videos on this channel, you can't do any of that while the system is doing the test. So during the test for that 30 to 45 minutes, this is kind of your break point. You can clean up the job site, you can take your break, go to lunch, smoke break, whatever you gotta do. Maybe take some time to collect all the installation and operation manuals for the end user so they can hang on to those. Do your documentation, your reports, record model numbers, serial numbers for warranty. Whatever you gotta do, basically you got 45 minutes to an hour to kill time. You can't do anything. When the system passes the test, the outdoor unit will go back to H3P automatically, back to the main screen. It'll shut off automatically. And your indoor units, the thermostats will turn off back to off. So the green light will turn off. And at this point, your test is considered complete. Now, what happened during the test from a functionality standpoint? So the test sets the target condensing and evaporating temperatures for the system's performance, the range of operation. It's also looking to make sure that it has proper communication and it's looking for temperature exchange across all equipment. So that means, did you open your stop valves, your king valves, your service ports, whatever you call them? They're the two valves right at the outdoor unit where you hooked up your line set. Did you open those up? Yes or no? I mean, sometimes guys forget that and it happens, right? Your, your test will fail if it doesn't see heat exchange across all the indoor units. Um, something else that might happen is you, if you have an isolation valve on one of your RefNet branches, because maybe you're... Uh, 
coming back and you're adding a unit later or or maybe you were going to come back later but then you ended up doing the whole job at once but you forgot to open up the isolation valve all kinds of problems can happen from that i'll digress and not go into that in this video but if an indoor unit for whatever reason doesn't have heat exchange meaning there was no refrigerant that went through that indoor unit then this this test will fail it's not looking for proper superheat it's just looking for temperature change period any temperature change is refrigerant flowing through the entire system or do i have a restriction somewhere a closed eev that's not opening properly because you didn't purge with nitrogen when you brazed or maybe it was just a failed eev coil or a bad board we don't know that's the type of stuff it's looking for it's not doing a test for performance it's not going to look at am i maintaining target discharge pipe temperature am i maintaining proper subcool at the outdoor unit proper superheat at the indoor unit it's not doing any of those tests those are all tests that you will need to do with your d checker or your service checker after the system is complete you're going to verify performance the system is just doing a self-diagnostic to say hey can i operate or can't i operate one other thing you need to make sure that i forgot to tell you about is remove a little bracket on the foot of the compressor it will be hiding under the compressor blanket make sure to remove that that is just a shipping bracket and if you don't remove it if you don't remove that shipping bracket the compressor is going to sound terrible while it's operating so make sure you remove it they're normally these little orangish yellow brackets I unfortunately don't have any with me to show you. I'll grab a picture if I can find one and I'll put it up here for you guys. If I can't find one, I won't put one up here, but it's a little bracket. You really can't miss it. Just unvelcro the blanket of the compressor. Look for it. You loosen the bolt, you pop it out, tighten the bolt back down. You're good to go. So there you have it. Test operation. Hopefully you guys don't run into any problems. If at any point the test fails, a um, couple things to think about here. So if it fails, you will get an error code on your NAV controller and the outdoor unit will go H2P and H3P solid. Sometimes guys will forget to turn off all the NAVs before starting the test. If the system is already in alarm and you start the test, it will immediately fail the test. You know it fails the test because the outdoor unit will go H2P, H3P solid. That is an indication there is an error code in the system. If you have a loose expansion valve, as in the example I gave you earlier on, yes, that will also cause this problem. So if the system isn't in alarm because all the navs are off, but then as soon as you put it into test, which turns on all the navs, and now all of a sudden there is an alarm because your expansion valve is unplugged, it'll immediately fail the test. But other than that, you guys, that's pretty much it for test operation. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set the master on a VRVS heat pump. You have to set a master controller. We'll talk about that in the next video. But for today, guys, it was really just test operations. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll read through all your comments. I always try to respond to all of your questions. There are no bad questions, you guys. We're all trying to learn this stuff together. So don't hesitate if you're thinking it. Someone else is probably thinking it as well. So put it in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, you guys. Thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you all have an awesome day.